Welcome to another episode of Sports and Discourse with your host, Derek Stevenson. Guys, after the UCLA game, a lot of fans was upset. Everybody's kind of divided right now. And I think Calipari was starting to feel a little pressure. So he um, he responded to the fans. And what he said was he thinks he's going to start changing the starting lineup, right? And he said that some players may be playing too many minutes. And it just got me thinking, like, is this just him selling us some bullshit again? Or did he actually figure out what to do with this team? And I hope that he actually figured out what to do with this team because it just seems like it's another one of those statements that kind of annoys a lot of the fan base because they feel like he just saying something to just try to pacify the fans at, you know, any given time. And one of the statements that he had made, like I said, I pointed it out in uh, my last video. He said that Ugana Kingsley or Anyenzo, I'm sorry, Ugana Anyenzo was going to be Oscar Sheway's backup. And then he didn't play at all against UCLA, if I remember correctly. Um, I don't think he did. If he did, he didn't play much. He definitely wasn't Oscar's official backup if you watched the game. So I kind of feel like when he makes that type of statement, is it for us or is it to like, is it like a warning to the players on the team, basically telling them like, y'all need to wake up or I'm about to start using this guy? Either way, I just kind of felt like that was a weird statement. Um, and I feel like for him to just announce that he's changing his starting lineup, that he's going to start limiting some people's minutes, I feel like that's another one of those statements where I'm like, is he just trying to pacify us? Or is he trying to like wake up some of the players? And more specifically, I think a lot of the players think he was actually talking about Severe Wheeler. And... Severe Wheeler is one of his guys, so let's not get it twisted. Like, we know that Severe is going to play. Um, and honestly, I think Severe Wheeler is definitely needed on the team because he seems to be one of the only guys that can consistently, because of his speed, beat his man off the dribble. Now, the bad part about that is we don't know what's going to happen after he gets around that first defender. We don't know. If he's going to score, if he's going to turn the ball over, if he's going to get blocked, we don't know what's going to happen after he gets past that first man, but he seems to be able to beat one defender pretty easy so far in this season. And so I would say I definitely feel like we got to have Severe Wheeler playing solid basketball and I feel like there's some other guys, too, that maybe, hopefully, might get a shot. Like, I still can't figure out why, against the good competition, he doesn't give a dude Thero a chance at all. And I know it's probably frustrating to a dude just because I can't see him playing or performing that much worse than some of these guys in practice that Cal just doesn't feel like he deserves a chance at all. I mean, in all the summer league games, some of the earlier preseason games, I mean, I would say a dude looked just as good as anybody on the team, honestly. Like, whenever he was in the game, he seemed to always be making stuff happen. He kind of had that same type of, you know, that dog in him on defense that Casey Wallace has, like, where he gets after it on defense, he gets in the passing lanes, you know, he's rebounding. So... It definitely, um, if he is able to produce any of that at the against high major competition, I would like to see if he can do it. Um, because it just seems like we can't get enough of those guys on the court at the same time. But I would like to see him give him some minutes. If you're going to take minutes away from guys, I'd like to see him maybe get a, a better opportunity. Um, but like I said, most people think he's directly talking about some severe Wheeler who um he's kind of 
he's kind of becoming that guy that the the fan base is really starting to be um, frustrated with. He, uh, you know, you always see his name come up. And he actually, if you look at his numbers, if I remember correctly, I don't think his numbers are actually bad. I still think he has a good assist to turnover ratio. Um, so it, it's kind of hard to really judge him because he doesn't necessarily play bad. But I don't think he really inspires confidence in Big Blue Nation that we can win a championship with him leading the way and especially with him playing a lot of minutes in crunch time because it just seems like he's going to give you uh, one or two blunderhead uh, plays at the end of the game that could potentially hurt or cost you the game. And I think a lot of fans are just really like kind of looking at Cal like, all right, you you might have to start transitioning Case and Wallace into their primary point guard position. And that's another situation that kind of I'm kind of on the fence about because if Case and Wallace is playing point guard, then he's going to be distributing the ball to other players, but realistically he's probably our second best player and we need his 15 to 17 points a game. So I actually like him better playing off the ball so he could focus on trying to score because we can't score this year. Um, so we need like all the guys that can get shots and actually make stuff happen. We need them to be in that uh, mental mind frame to where he's attacking. So I wouldn't necessarily really know if I want him to play point guard, actually. But maybe, you know, maybe that could be the case where they move him to the point guard position and things start to change and maybe the team starts to click. I'm not really for sure. Um, hopefully Chris Livingston, hopefully we'll start to see some consistency from Chris Livingston because Chris Livingston, like I said, he had been kind of the one that kind of disappointed me because I thought he was going to be able to do more of that, like, play how he played against uh, UCLA, I thought he would be able to do have more games like that versus, you know, him coming in, making a couple of, you know, bad plays and then getting pulled and, you know, just not really being able to find his way into the game. So hopefully this could be his turning point in the season where he starts to come alive and starts to be able to really contribute something because we just need it. Like we need everybody to be giving you something like – we just we can't just give it to Oscar Sheway every time. Like we we know that he can't just he's not gonna be able to carry the team all by itself. Like he's gonna be able to do what he does. He's gonna get us a double double, but we can't just come down and the only thing we can do is just force it into him. Like these other guys have got to be able to make something happen. We need them to take some pressure off of Oscar if anything else. Like we need guys like Toppin. He's just got to get going, man, and he's got to, you know, play with confidence and not be afraid to make mistakes. And I'm not sure if some of these guys out there are just playing and they're just overthinking the game too much and they might be afraid that their minutes are going to go down if they make mistakes. And, and you know, when I play basketball, I, I can attest to this. When you have a coach – that just turns you loose and tells you, don't worry, like, we're going to ride it out, like, you my guy. You just play better. You play more free, and you actually make less mistakes because you're not just constantly thinking about being pulled out the game. You're not worried that you're not going to play enough minutes. You know, when you know you're going to have opportunity, you just seem to be more comfortable because I've been on the other end where I've played for coaches that – just I knew they weren't going to really use me. And when you get in the game, you you can feel that immediately. Like, you trying not to overdo it. You're trying not to make mistakes. You're trying to gain the favor of your coaching staff. And a lot of times you make mistakes and you play bad trying to do that. And um, I feel like it might be a lot of the guys on the team. I feel like uh, Frederick might be going through some of that. Uh, maybe even Reeves a little bit. But Wheeler's the the one that he he plays with no fear. Like when he's out there, he just does him. And 
we live and we die by it. But he he plays like he's just sure that he's going to give you what he got and you're going to take it or you're going to leave it. But we need we need that to we need that from some of the other guys too. Like we really need some of them to start stepping up and just playing like not being afraid, just attacking on both ends of the court. Um, but hopefully, man, I would like, like I said, I would like to see a dude Thero get some more run just to see, man, like at this point, like give him a chance, man, he might spark something or maybe he might, um, wake one of the other players up and, and scare them, uh, into playing better so that a dude doesn't take their minutes. But either way, I just feel like it can't hurt to give him a little burn and see what he can do against a good solid team. And, you know, like I said, man, I I believe that we got to have Wheeler playing good to win, but maybe Cal is going to have to figure out in certain possessions, certain times of the game that he might have to, um, unfortunately, he might have to take Wheeler out that game. And hopefully it doesn't, you know, bring Wheeler's confidence all the way down to where he starts playing even worse. Cause like I said, his numbers really aren't that bad, but it's just those costly, timely errors. And we cannot afford that this year. We don't have the type of players so far that seem to be able to just get you out of a hole or that you can just um, feel com- comfortable and confident that they're going to finish the game. They're going to make the right plays. Uh, we don't have a lot of that this year. Um, Unfortunately, man, I've been watching Ty Ty Washington in the G League, and I actually believe if he would have returned to Kentucky, I think they actually would have been good enough to probably win the championship because, you know, him one year better, I think he would have easily been a guy that can give you 14 to 20 a night, handle the ball if you need him to handle the ball. He can shoot decent from the outside. Um, he, he, he's the missing piece that, that would have really helped him. And I haven't got to really watch Bryce Hopkins yet. Um, the Bryce Hopkins situation was kind of, it's kind of weird to me because on the one hand, I kind of understand why Calipari didn't use him because a lot of people have been telling me that he had already told the coaching staff early in the season that he just wasn't happy at Kentucky and, I guess he wanted to be more closer to home or he wanted to just be in a different situation. So for whatever reason, he just wasn't comfortable at Kentucky. Um, So if that's the case, you know, I can't really see you giving a whole lot of time to a person that's already told you he's not bought in anymore for whatever reason, you know, whether it's because he's not playing or if he really just homesick or whatever the case may be. He already let the staff know, like, he's leaving. Um, So if that's the case, you know, you got to go with the other guys because you got to either try to get people ready for the seasons to come or you got to have people that you know are at least locked in for this year that's focused on this year. So, you know, it looks it looks kind of bad because everybody been telling me that he's been playing real well. Like I said, I haven't watched him yet. I've been seeing some of the numbers, but I really haven't actually watched what he's doing. Um, I'm gonna keep an eye on him though for sure, and uh, see what I think. But yeah, man, I uh, I'm just anxious to see what happens because right now, like I said, the fan base is super divided. We got some people that still, um, you know, still in Cal's corner. We got some people that's done with him. Some people want him out of there, and I'm kind of want you know. I might be a small percentage, but I'm kind of still in the middle. Like, I don't really know how I feel yet. I still like Cal. Um, I still would love for him to be the coach of Kentucky, but he's definitely got to start doing some difference. And I, and I just hope that he's not just giving us more loose rap with these, these statements that he's making about changing some minutes and, you know, shaking up the starting lineup like – I want you to just, instead of just telling us, actually do something, actually change something, actually improve the team because we need it. And, you know, I don't think it would uh, take too much for him to get the fans back supporting him. 
but he just might have to just uh, stop being so damn stubborn and just, you know, try to be more, um, I guess I would say, try to coach more based on the personnel that you have available to you instead of trying to fit everybody into your offense because it just don't seem to be working with this team. So we'll see what happens, man. But anyways, I go on and wrap it up, man. We'll get back at it next time. Sports and Discourse with Derek Stevenson.